Cultural preservation can be seen as the effort to put forth to protect diverse cultures and practices from disappearing because of lack of use, curricular exclusion, or devaluation by a broader society. Now, in order to help preserve the seemingly disappearing cultures, the United States mission to Nigeria um, of the U.S. State Department has issued a notice of funding opportunity for small grants competition of the United States Ambassadors Fund for Cultural Preservation, AFCP. The AFCP supports the preservation of cultural sites, cultural objects, and forms of traditional cultural expression in more than 100 countries around the world, including Nigeria. Well, joining us to discuss this is Stephen Ibelli. He's the Public Affairs Officer. U.S. Consulate Lagos. It's good to have you join us. Thank you so much. It's really, really great to be here. And as they say in Nigeria, how you day? How far now? How far now? You day Kempe? <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> okay. So um, it's interesting um, to hear about the Ambassador's Fund. When I saw some of the pictures um, uh, online, I was very interested. Um, mm. Tell us, give us a brief background into the Ambassador's Fund and why the U.S. government is backing this. No, that's a great question, Marianne. And so this really started in 2003. Uh, Congress passed this law where we fund cultural preservation around the world. And so we funded projects in over 137 countries. Uh, the program started in Nigeria in 2011. And since then, we've done about 10 projects for over a million, a million dollars. And really, the intent of the law and the intent of Congress was really to show respect and appreciation for the cultures around the world, for the countries that, that we work in, for the countries that we that we really operate in um, and really live every day. As diplomats, we don't just visit countries, we live in mm -hmm. the countries, we breathe the countries, we eat the food in the countries. And so um, it's a great way to show that kind of respect. Um, and it's, it's a really wonderful program. Mm. It's interesting. As we know, um, the U.S. is a strong supporter of efforts to preserve these cultures, just as you've said. And I, could, I read that you have um, so far preserved projects in several states uh, across the Federation for the past four years, um, if not more. I want to know some of the states that you've gone to. The, recent, the most recent one is Oshobo, which everybody has seen. Um, but tell us why Oshobo most recently. Yeah, it's a project for the Sacred Grove. Um, and this is, it's, it's important to remember this is a competition. And so um, organizations apply for these grants. And so there was a grantee called SIARC. They're an organization out of California, actually started by an Iraqi immigrant who cared about his uh, country's heritage and wanted to pay that forward to other countries. Yeah. Um, and so they are working in the, in the Sacred Grove in one of the shrines there that was unfortunately damaged. Um, but what they're doing is really using technology. So it's like technological archaeology. Yeah. Um, and they're mapping the shrine, a 3D map. Uh, and so they will know from this 3D map then how they can reconstruct it. Um, because if you don't really have a road map, if you don't know, you know, if you don't have a map in front of you, how do you know where you're, yeah. you're going? And mm -hmm. so this is the intent of, of, of this project. Uh, are they working with people who are like, um, let's say, because where I come from, you have someone who preserves shrines. So he's like a chief in charge of the shrine. And they seem to know more about the shrines and even the architecture of it. So are they working in collaboration with people like that? Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and it really, I think the success of this program is the partnerships that, that we make. And so we have a partnership with the National Commu uh, Commission of Museum and Monuments. We have partnerships even with the king there in Ashobo, Sacred Grove. Um, and all of the, you know, all of the organizations. There's also the Alursa Trust as well. There's a trust there that we work with, Aduni Alursa Trust, AOT. Um, and with all of those partners who are interested in really preserving the Sacred Grove, I think we've really had a wonderful, a wonderful project. And that's just one example of all the projects that we've done here. Mm. Um, the average person who's watching obviously wants to say, well, I have a, a beautiful place in you know my area where it needs preservation. But you spoke about the competitive part of it, yes. and I and I want to know how that works because, of course, whoever's watching now is more interested. Um, why why should people compete? Well, the applications are open until December fifth, and so we really welcome uh, any of those projects to to preserve. It's all on our web website, which is ng. Dot US embassy dot gov. Um, there's all the rules there, what sort of we fund, what we don't fund. Um, for example, we don't build really buildings. We're more interested in the preservation uh, of cultures. We've even done um, preservation of oral cultures. That was the IFA 
oral heritage and Oyo State. That was one of our past projects. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's a worldwide competition, but Nigeria has done very well um, because Nigeria has such a rich heritage. It has such a rich Absolutely. history. Uh, we have another project, a really large one, um, in Epe. Uh, with that's my culture. It, preserving the Ejebu Kingdom. Um, and there was a series oh, of... Oh, that's Ekpe. Okay. Ekpe, exactly. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, and preserving sort of, you know, the, the canals that are around and really defining where they are um, as well. And we're going to be doing that with LiDAR technology from the air. Oh, wow. Uh, very similar to what they're doing in Ashobo on the ground, mm. you know, using this kind of, again, this technological archaeology. I mean, I think we think, you know, we're digging in the ground and mm. we're dusting off fossils with our brushes, but it's, it's really technical with archaeology these days. Interesting. Um, one of the things that I find very disturbing um, about preserving cultures and traditions is the fact that we're basically justicing it because we feel that we're more civilized now and so we tend to put, put them, you know, um, at the back. Uh, I've noticed that I've visited, I've visited some places where the museums, the monuments are no, no longer really taken care of. These sites, I, I think two years ago I was visiting uh, the old um, governor of the old colonial governor's home. It was literally dead. It was, the building was almost falling down. And, and so I'm asking, when these monies are being given, when the funding takes place, is there some form of education um, for people to continue to maintain those sites? Because it's not enough to make it look good and refurbish it if there be any form of refurbishing. But then after a while, it's abandoned again. Is there a follow through? Are there people who make sure that that doesn't happen? Yeah, no, that's a great question, Marianne. And, and part of a lot of the grants is training. Uh, in Ashobo, for example, they're training a new generation about how to take care of these shrines, how the construction methods, how they actually do it. Um, and so there's always a component, and there's always a local component. With our Ejebo Kingdom grant, we're working with three ar archaeologists from, from Ibadan and also from, from Ife. So um, that is really the strength of this program, is are these partnerships that we form, because it's not just an American NGO, it's not just the consulate, it really is a community. Uh, it's, it really does take a village in some of these cases, and that is how you propagate these into the future. Because if you really want to know, you know where you're going as a culture, you need to also know where you have been. Uh, and to be able to really, to really hold on to that cultural heritage, to really savor it, to relish it, and to, to bring it out. Um, and that's really what we try to do with this fund. Um, you you mentioned the sites where the your your sites where people need to go to get the rules and the regulations. Are there age limits? Uh, are there are they open to non-governmental organizations or governments or government agencies? Yeah, they're mostly open to non-government agencies and government agencies, cultural institutions, museums. Uh, you see all kinds of different organizations apply. Uh, we always like to see the partnerships, so we like to see one organization maybe working with another organization as well. Uh, the minimum is $10,000 and the maximum is 500000 So that's sort of the floor and the ceiling, 10,000 to, to 500,000. And the website really spells it out exactly uh, you know, what you need. You first kind of do a concept paper, and if that's accepted, then we ask for sort of a more detailed budget. Mm. So again, it's ng.usembassy.gov. Apply until December 5th. Okay, let's quickly talk about the places that you visited, sure. aside from Oshogo. Um, I saw some monoliths that um, look like some from my place, and you did mention yes. off camera. So yeah. tell us some of the places you've been. Yeah, that's the Ecom rock carvings, um, and they're from Cross River State and also Jigawa State. Um, and again, that shows you the breadth of this fund that we, you know, we work north to south, and, and it really again depends on sort of the proposals. Um, but unfortunately, COVID disrupted that, but we're just getting back on track because the plan is that we're going to actually exhibit those rock carvings in Calabar at the National Museum, which is a wonderfully beautiful oasis of calmness and beauty. Have you been there lately? Uh, I was there a few months ago, yes. And it's an, yeah, but an it's old, closed down. Well, it's in an old colonial building, um, and we're doing some refurbishment there as well with the library. Oh, right. So it does, it does operate. Um, but they have a beautiful exhibition space, so we're going to do it there. And then we're also going to do it at the National Museum in Lagos. Oh, great. So you work with the AFCT, um, sorry, I beg your pardon, the NCTDA, that's the 
um, tourism guys? Do you work with the National Museums and Mon uh, Monuments? It's mostly the National Commission for Museum and Monuments. And Monuments. That's, that's our, our partners. And those are those, really that's the entity that's also responsible for um, you know, for, for the upkeep of, of these museums. And, and as a matter of fact, we're really getting close also to a cultural treaty with the government of Nigeria, and that will really set a framework for, for further cooperation. Um, for example, the return of the Benin bronzes that are uh, located in some museums in the United States. So we're really looking forward to making progress and signing that at a future date as well. Well, one more time, can we get that website before uh, we go? Sure, NG dot us embassy dot g o v okay um you've been here for some time uh, what what have where have you visited and what meals have you tried well we've been to i've been to most of the states in the south the consulate uh, of lagos is really responsible for the states in the south so uh oyo ando um been to you know lots of cities as well port harcourt oyo did you try the bole and the fish in port harcourt i had the fisherman soup in calabar delicious um very very good and so yeah, I mean, we try all the foods everywhere we go. Uh, I think my favorite is probably, you know, catfish pepper soup. Um, like that as well. Ofada was, you know, good. A little hot spicy. for me. Very <laughs> spicy. You know, very, that was a challenge. Uh, but I, you know, I tried. Um, and succeeded, I think, uh, you know, to some degree. Have you tried Amala? Uh, yes, I have, of course. Yeah, no, that's, you know, that's a signature. I mean, that's, you know, bring it. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, but it's, it's, it's really wonderful. I mean, it's, it's wonderful meeting the people. We have wonderful partners, really wonderful partners who are passionate about all of the different things we do, whether it's women in STEM, uh, whether it's the cultural you know, preservation, or whether it's, it's working with young people or civic activism. We have over 8,000 alumni in this country from our program exchanges, and they are so active so optimistic and so energetic and we just love working with them it, it's beautiful and i want to appreciate you we're, we're hoping that you keep us um, up to date with the more uh, of these activities that you're doing across the country because this is how we preserve our culture and continue to bring them to light absolutely Stephen Ibelli is of course of the u.s consulate here in lagos we want to thank you for being part of the conversation thank you so very much maria thank you for the great work well thank you all for staying with us we'll take a short break now to hear what nigerians believe as regards of governors having a hand in the selection of their successors will return and I'll give you my take. We don't need to we need to fight for ourselves by ourselves. Let the mass let the masses fight for themselves. They should, they should not say uh, go, go for that reason for anything. They don't have any reason to say we have this we are person that we enter if we, if we, if we live there. No I don't think so I don't just think so, because the government is for the people and for the people by the people. So I think the people have to make their choices, not for them being there. Well, thank you all for being part of the conversation. Don't forget, be part of the political process. Do not just get your voters card, but join a political party today, whichever one you choose. Wherever you want to join, whatever ideology you think the party holds, it would be good for you because you can be part of the decision making in your community, in your state, and of course in the country. I am Mariana Cohn, thanking you for joining us. Have a good evening.